You might say, what's a, uh, a sports guy doing up here at the podium? And I'll, I'll try to explain that for a brief moment or two before we get started. I come from a world of fun and games, a world of sports, where millions of followers crowd around a TV set to watch a football game, where throngs of fans huddle around a bracket and watch the drama of a basketball game or the competition of a baseball game, where thousands crowd into stadiums to watch in person the drama of an athletic competition. But I contend to you that we have it all wrong. I contend to you that what matters most is the game of life, the fight for life in the quest to beat cancer. The unfortunate and tragic reach of this disease touches each one of us. There isn't anybody in this audience today that's not familiar with someone who's battling cancer. I say we should fill those stadiums. I say we should fill those arenas and cheer and push and support the warriors, the gladiators, the scientists, the researchers, the doctors on the front lines looking for answers, helping cancer patients find a new clinical trial. We need to take the same energy and fervor we apply to our sports teams and transmute that energy and enthusiasm and fight the fight, work as a team with the hope of finding more effective, less toxic treatments in the fight against cancer today. I say we have our priorities all wrong. What matters most is giving that mom, that dad, that son, that daughter, that aunt, that uncle better tools in the fight against cancer. I salute each and every foundation for their increase of awareness. The ribbons, the walks are all important, but in my mind, the desperation in this fight should also center around getting there faster, finding better science ASAP, finding more effective treatments. Our small group, the Dorothy Foundation, has one little niche and it's very simple to understand against the complex problem of cancer. Bring people together. In the very first biomarker conference I attended, the founder of ASU Biodesign, George Post, said, quote, silos subvert solutions. Let's go back to sports for a second. It's not about me. It's about we. There is no I in team. It is a movement. It is working together. And that's what this conference, and Joan, I thank you for allowing us to, to be a small part of AZ Bio, because I will tell you this, you can pull your program, if you will, and look at the great credentials of Marty Tenenbaum and Josh LeBear, but I will tell you what impresses me more are the people they are. Josh lost his mom to breast cancer. Marty is a remarkable advanced melanoma cancer survivor. These are two warriors on the front line that collaborate, 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 and think team, and bring people and ideas and data together. You know, when you see, as I have seen, that 49-year-old mother in a hospital bed battling advanced cancer who has two teenage kids, tell that mom, we're not doing enough to find that next best clinical trial as she fights for survival to raise her kids. Think about that image. You know, one of the interesting items here in this two-year quest as a small group, Frank Maskins is one of our mentors. And what I find fascinating about Frank is this. He's not just a great oncologist, and I call him the Red Arbach of oncology. It's the sensitivity and soul and heart that he has. And he wrote this poem, and this poem to me typifies the passion and heart you have to have for your patients. He was treating a patient, and sadly, this patient had beaten cancer for a while, and then the mass roared back. And he talked about in his poem, how many oncologists are writing poems, called Tidal Wave, the emotional di distress of having it come back. How many times have we seen that with cancer? And he wrote, and I'll share this with you briefly, Tidal Wave is the title. 
So many have passed this way before, ocean rising behind the door, the sea forestalled no more. What do you want of me? So many have passed this way, knowing what's behind the door, needing solace and nothing more. What do you expect of me? It is that puzzle, it is that dilemma of trying to fight on behalf of your patient. But it is also that spirit that says if we work together as a team and we collaborate, we can get there faster. And that to me is the spirit of what you're about to hear. I, I can't tell you how excited I am in just introducing what Joan has to offer here with Marty and Josh. And uh, I thank all of you for participating. I want to acknowledge my sister Sandy, my wife Jill, who are part of our small group and all the work they've done. Diane Price, ASU Biodesign, just allowing us to facilitate in a small, small way this group today. Um, it is a, an honor and a pleasure. And hopefully, as we say in sports, it moves the ball forward.